And welcome, everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some Selesnia tokens to start the day off today. It's 5-0 Friday, and that's where we are playing three 5-0 lists. We're only doing three instead of four because we're going to try. We're going to see if we have time for Omniscience Draft again um, at the end of the stream. We did that yesterday. That was a lot of fun. If you didn't see that over on YouTube. But we're doing three 5-0 lists from recent Magic Online um, deck list dumps. You know, like um, about twice a week, they post all the uh, unique lists that, that uh, go 5-0 in one of their leagues. And so we like to try them out on Fridays. Call it 5-0 Friday. Um, I guess I could have like a, a little thing here on the, the screen that says that, but oh well. Hawkeye's a big fan of 5-0 Friday, as you can tell. Anyway, this is there was one um, from yesterday, and it had so, this Selesnia tokens list was in there, and it's kind of mid rangey, but I mean I guess we would probably call this a tokens list because it, as you see at the top end we got four copies of Divine Visitation. All of our tokens are going to be four four angels with flying and vigilance, and of course four copies of March of the Multitudes, four raise the alarm. We have Amara that can make tokens. Um, Lovestruck Beast can make tokens as well. It is just if one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, though. Not any type of token. It's not doesn't count food tokens. How how great would that be if you could just like make a food token with Gilded Goose and it's an angel? That'd be pretty. That'd be pretty awesome. But I guess that'd make Oko even better. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go ahead and, and give this deck a try. Y'all know how much I, I like Selesnya decks. Selesnya is my favorite guild. Unfortunately, Selesnya has been the weakest guild in Standard for a while. But let's let's see how this Selesnya deck goes. Even if we don't have <laughs> even if we don't have like a a way to like even if our march of the multitude isn't going to be like huge. It's not going to be like a a really big march of the multitudes. Um, even if it's just like two or three that all we're doing is, you know, convoking for two or three soldiers, if they are four, four angels, getting two or three, four, four angels is, uh, still game breaking. So yeah, let's give us a try. We got our mana, we got our acceleration trying to get up to our five drops, play our five drops, and then have a lot of mana and play this other stuff. Um, yeah, so we're going to play, we're going to play like four matches in ranked with, with all the decks today. So with them being the 5-0 lists, we want to test them out. Give them a give them a good solid test here over in ranked. So you get a tie bar on. So you're saying people turn to Fires plus Iron Crag plus Finale of Glory. Well, f turn four fires, turn five, the whole crew is over. Yeah, because it had to be turned. Yeah, because you wouldn't be able to do all those the same turn. It's a little confused there at first. <clears throat> so I could I could get turn one flower going, or I could just get one of these Temple Gardens in. I'll just do that. Uh, we'll see. We may need to, I need or want to, um, flourish. We got a good amount of lands already. Don't have good blocks. This is just a really good hand for my opponent. Don't think I'm winning this. In fact, I know I'm not winning this.
So I'm glad that they have the Ember Cleave on the Venerable Knight. Because it'd be really unbeatable on a Knight of the Ebon Legion. But yeah, this is just... This is just too strong of a hand from what our opponent had on the play. Um, that helps, I suppose. A little bit. Four one drops in Ember Cleave, living the dream. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a lot better than just four one drops. Like these cards are, you know, these things are ridiculously strong. These Evan Legions. I mean, all this does is keep me alive for a turn. I don't really know how I'm gonna how I'm supposed to win the next turn. Or, like, stay, not win, but stay alive. I don't know how I'm supposed to stay alive the next turn. We stayed alive for this turn. So I can't shot because we're at two. Hey, Exerps. Uh, you just saw the first match. Yeah, first match our opponent was on the play with triple one drop start on turn one and turn two. And then Ember Cleave. So it wasn't too close. Um... So I'm going to need all these Wicked Wolves. I wonder if I want the Questing Beasts also. Like, Prison Realm for a one-drop isn't really exciting as far as removal goes. Correct, excerpts. These are 5 lists. Five O Friday. So what do I think about just doing that? All right, I'm going to just try that. I kind of want these Questing Beasts in there, but I don't really want to take out the more Divine Visitation or Nissa's. Visitation is the type of card that's so powerful. You know, it can win games on its own, but if you're just... It doesn't help you slow down a really fast attack like we just had. From our opponent. It is nice that Gilded Goose can, you know, tap for mana for March of the Multitudes without having to use a food because of the Convoke. Looks like our opponent cyborged into control.
think that's a safe block. I guess another Paragon. Alright, another Paragon. Good news is I'm set up pretty well against Paragons. Good card. That's pretty good. That was also a good card. I like just being I like just picking off the fervent champions as a way to not have to use a food you know being able to kill something without using a food basically <laughs> these acclaim contenders just have infinite of them I got pretty punished for for blocking with the goose though for sure. So it would have been nice to be able to make another food that last turn and so on. Flourish. No. It's only Wednesday. I hope there's not a, another Legion's End to exile all these soldier tokens. It does make sense to, to sacrifice this, the token on the same one again. <clears throat> so instead of letting it die and then sacrifice on the other and have a 4-4, four, four, we, now we have a 5-5. Five, five. I 
The one acclaimed contender has found two others. Perfect. Perfect draw stub. Perfect draw stub. That's true. If we, we, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. And also, if I would have used it on the other one, they would have kept a three one. Where using on that one, they don't keep a three one. It's a good point there too. I'm thinking Amara on the draw may not be so great. Just going to trade down with a 1-1 one -one at best. Or 1-mana card at best. Alright, let's try a couple Veil of Summers. Yeah, Flourish is always a good one. That's a great one in top deck. I was certainly considering attacking with everything if we didn't draw that. I mean, these are two good two good cards. You know, like we have a turn one play, a turn two play, a turn three play, and this is a good turn three play with five five. I like these two. The problem is this is like a five card hand. Like these other two lands are pretty useless. So like we could try a six card hand, but that's the thing is like it's risky. If we mulligan, we could just you know end up with nothing. Is this gonna really win? I mean, it depends on what we draw. We have to just draw spells. There's 22 lands in the deck, so there's 17 other lands out of 53 cards. Um, so it's basically we're at you know two thirds of two thirds of the cards in our deck are spells. Like you know, so we should be drawing like in our next three draw steps, we should draw two spells in a land. Um. Yeah, it's risky both ways. So it's supposedly by turn three we should have two more spells. I don't like keeping, but I also don't like mulliganing. So what do you do when you don't like either option? <laughs> I don't like either option. You can see it. <laughs> Come on, our first first card's already a land. Well, the next two better be spells. Okay. Spell. Not a very good spell, but it's a spell. Yeah, it looks like opponent's hand is pretty good. Winning on the draw is tough. Uh, 
That was the perfect card for them. Just the absolute perfect card. We drew another spell, so we did draw two spells in one land. Should have triple blocked, I mean... Triple block, I don't kill the Venerable Knight also, and I take another four points of damage. I just risk, you know, I just risk them not having, like, that's the the one card that they're going to have in their deck that's going to, that's going to have that, you know, like, in, that's the only card that they could have to make that a bad block. And look, I mean, look at where we're at. I, I went with, I went with the high upside play, and I, I don't really regret it. At least the, the Noxious Grass... You know, they don't have a Noxious Grass for these beasts anymore, at least. Alright, so five draws. We've... Five draws, we've drawn three spells, which is... You know, about, about what you would think. We were hoping to do better, but unfortunately, two of our three spells were just mana creatures. So that didn't make life very good. to keep in that hand. I also hated mulliganing it. That was just a just a poor hand. It was like the the absolute bottom of keepability on our side and my draws did not help it out and my opponent had a really good hand. So that was not close. Thanks Toasted. Alright Dark Dark Claw, have fun at work. You're going to crush it. Hey, Zerf, going good. We um, we got matched up against some tough Marty Knight uh, on the play hands, games one and game three, that beat us pretty bad. That happens. <laughs> yeah, we were a 22 land deck. We drew, yeah, drawing three out of six lands after keeping five land. That's just not... Not good. Not good. But I don't know like what like what we're going to re reasonably mulligan to at 6 cards that's going to beat that opponent's hand. I'm not exactly sure. I could have gone for the safe block with the with triple blocking the Lord, I suppose. And then they would have noxious grass one of my five fives. Anyway, new match. On the draw again. It's gonna be my new hit single. On the draw again.
I don't really know any other words to that the rest of that song, so I had nothing else there. But I'm I'm still working on the rest of the lyrics. Well, that's what I got to start with. <laughs> so far the song's perfect. Looks like people are really like liking these hyper aggro night decks. We've been playing against a lot of them the last couple of days. Alright, so I can go Druid Alarm Tribunal. Hey, Rex. Like the art on the Order of Midnight? That was pretty cool. All right, the more chip shots we get in, the better for our last card in hand. Because we're definitely going to try to end this game on a flourish. So we'll see if we're able to do that. Because even these Midnight Reaper triggers could add up. It's going to make it more difficult. Yeah, that gain three life hurts. So basically I can do 12 damage to them here. Which I guess I do that, then they, they draw two, and I don't really know how I'm finishing the game. Do I sit around and wait for a March of the Multitudes? And let them build up more of a battlefield? Probably not. Hey, Matthew. Happy Friday. So assuming they block both Paradise Druids, they take 14, two Reaper triggers. Or sorry, they take 10, two Reaper triggers, do an extra two. So they'll go down to four. If they have another Smitten Swordmaster in hand, they're trying to figure out if they can just 
Like if they have another Smitten Swordmaster in hand, I can I'll just be dead basically. Like they could they could just chump block with one. Yeah, all they have to do is just block with one creature and then. I guess I'm not quite dead. Then they can't. Five. Yeah, they yeah actually they can't quite kill me. Yeah, second flower would be nice. Alright, so they ended up with the obvious blocks. And they're down to four, but... Again, I'm not sure... Not sure how we're really finishing this game off. We haven't done a very good job of drawing spells. It's one thing we need to work on. It's just lands and mana creatures. <laughs> the last couple games. Like, things that are not lands or mana creatures. We drew... Like, this is... We drew, I guess, a flourish and a raise the alarm. That's not good. It's not good at all. They kept this two mana available, like they shocked in with Overgrown Tomb to play that Knight of the Ebon Legion, so like they, they wanted to keep up two mana. I don't know if that's like a, a Noxious Grasp main deck, um, or what, like I don't, I don't know what that shock was about. Uh, Black Lance Paragon, duh, obvious. Right, that card that my opponent played like five times last match. Probably that one. I would order of midnight not attack like at all. I'm scared of a like, this thing can't block. Like, what are they doing? All right, now we just have to draw something that makes a lot of tokens. Knight of the Ebon Legion is such a good card. That's really good. Seek shelter in my stewardship. Harness the elements. Yep. 
So we can block the two knights again and then crack a food to gain three life to stay alive from the Order of Midnight. Which is why I had to take up on a forest. Third Knight of the Oven Legion. Knight of the Oven Legion is a really big problem for my deck. We've noticed that over these games. I don't think I want to take out Divine Visitation for this matchup. I feel like I want my top end cards, actually. Um, I don't, I don't know if Divine Visitation is too slow. We saw like that game lasted a lot of turns. Divine Visitation can just go over the top. I'll take one out and we're going to take out an Amara and a Paradise Druid. And... Nissa and a tribunal. Maybe I should take out two tribunals. Maybe I shouldn't be playing three Veil of Summer. I mean, if we can get there, Castle Arden Vale with Divine Visitation in play is pretty sweet. If we can get there. So now do I get the beast out here or do I try waiting? My plan was to wait. And continue to follow that plan.
I wish I knew that I was going to have my fifth land drop next turn for sure. Wow. Attacking with Edgewall Innkeeper? I played Raise the Alarm last game. Thank you so much for the the sub there, Twitch Prime sub. That's our second on the day. Looks like I didn't update from the other one. Thank you so much. Cards are going to be a problem again. Protect the virtue of this world. Bleh. Well, deck hasn't been super impressive so far. We haven't had a, you know, curve out and play Divine Visitation and then play Tokens. That's never happened. I guess it's a, it's a lot easier to curve out whenever your deck is just filled with one mana cards that, that draw you tons of stuff or just a, a whole bunch of, like, really good one mana threats with Knight of the Ebon Legions. My opponents have been curving out very well. Oh well.
I'm, yeah, I'm guessing the, the thought with the Nissa is if you untap with Nissa, you have tons of mana so that you can use a lot of mana for March of the Multitudes. Like, if we would have untapped with Nissa there, if they didn't have removal in hand, we would have been able to have... Um, would have been able to play the Divine Visitation plus March for two the next turn. We could have done both of those. We're good at mulliganing. We haven't had an opponent mulligan yet. We have mulliganed all the time. We're good at that. Uh, yes, found. We are currently playing standard ranked. Yeah, we're on the draw again. And we, yeah, we just mulligan and, and on the draw all, all the time. But it's always keep seven. We had a pretty rough day that was, that was just like this yesterday. A very similar rough day yesterday. We'll see if it's still the case for today or not. Pretty sure I'm supposed to block that thing before it gets out of hand. Obviously blocking makes the whole rest of my hand a lot worse though. But Brian Bourne Cutthroat, you know, in a few turns is going to be a 4-3, then a 5-4, and a 6-5, and it's just going to be really difficult to deal with. So, like, right now we have the ability to. It does make everything else in our hands so much worse to block here. Yeah, Monty, we played uh, Grixis Amass yesterday. Um, we had the same kind of troubles that we're having in this league. We had... That that one was even worse, though. I I didn't even really play Magic in any of the games. This this deck, we've at least been playing Magic, but it was just it was just really, really bad land draws with Grixis Amass. It was, it was really unfortunate. I was looking forward to playing it a whole lot. So you could have traded with that thing last turn. Should have blocked. I mean, I can march for two right now, but it's not like march for two is going to really help. So three cards in hand. Maybe they don't have a counter spell. Yeah, I'm planning on giving... Uh, that deck another try soon. Alright, well at least get rid of this one.
Okay. <laughs> yep, GM and Prey is our only hope. Um, left, I mean, left struck beast can block. I don't, I don't care if left struck beast can attack or not. That's not, that's not an important quality of this, this particular game. This, these cutthroats are, they get so big. It's been a little awkward with the double white cost of March of the Multitudes. Could have killed this 9-8 a long time ago. They would have had an 8-7 still, though, because the, the other one not have been... All right, definitely getting these Veil of Summers in here. And then what do, what do we want of these? I, don't, I really don't want Nyssa for this matchup. Yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't have... A, like, their only counter spell was Essence Capture. You know, counter a creature. They just had all... They just had... Triple Brineborn Cutthroat, double Spectral Sailor, lands and Essence Captures. Is Prison Realm better than Wolf? Maybe, it's cheaper. They do play Brazen Borrower though that bounces Prison Realm. So I guess that's a problem. So maybe not. Then I have Conclave Tribunals and everything too. Not exactly sure how this deck went 5-0. Do you want a card I haven't played against? So, yeah, as you all know, like the, the Mythic Championship's going on right now, and 70% of the decks are Oko decks. I played against zero Oko decks all of yesterday, and so far we're 0 for, you know, 0 for 3 of playing against Oko decks. I'm guessing that's what this deck is trying to trying to do, is, you know, have, like, go wide against Oko with, like, Divine Visitation is an enchantment that Oko doesn't touch. And they're not playing like a ton of counter magic and you just you can have more time against those decks. 
I think if we take out if we take out divination, we just don't have the power to actually win the game. Like the rest of our cards aren't good enough to win the game. So even though there's a lot of downside to divine visitation, I think that we need it for just the power for our deck. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, Kendis. But yeah, the. Because remember yesterday, like the first two decks that I played, like I had the four Angrass Rampages that I was talking about at the beginning, like how good Angrass Rampage is with, with all the Okos around. And then we played against zero Okos with either deck. And the Angrass Rampages just looked terrible the whole time. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> Well, we've successfully gotten a Love Struck Beast underneath them. Not really expecting another Wildborn Preserver. My plan this turn is just to make a food with the goose and play the Temple Garden, and I'll have Castle activation the following turn to be able to make another 1 1 if need be, if they do have like a Preserver that blocks the 1 1 or a Brazen Borrower that bounces or anything like that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the difference between going first and second against flashes. Yeah, it is really pronounced. Yeah, we're on the draw last game, play this game. But then game three will be on the draw again. Do 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 Hey Nug. Uh, no, I think. I mean, I think my opponent is just thinking about what they want to do. Is my I don't think my opponent is roping. I think they just had a decision of what they want to do. Yeah, so like they. And they were thinking about it. They didn't, like, that deck doesn't need to think about what to do on their turn. So then, so yeah, they're just contemplating what their decision was going to be.
It's definitely good they didn't have an essence capture there to, or a negate. You know, like either one of those would have countered Lovestruck Beast. That was definitely the best card they could have. My opponent's had a low enough life total, I really don't need Flourish. Plus, Flourish doesn't allow me to attack with Lovestruck Beast. So basically, if they have a Nightpack Ambusher, I'm not allowing them to double block to take out Lovestruck Beast. They have to block the beast, otherwise that's lethal. Alright, so they have that chump blocker. So now I have the option of either playing the visitation or making a 1-1 one -one with castle. Maybe our cards are good enough to win without Divine Visitation. Maybe we can take them out and play Beast and Wolf instead. I'm not sure if Questing Beast is better than Wicked Wolf. I just don't, I'm not sure. If they have an Ambusher, I'd rather have Wolf. They just have a bunch of... Well, yeah, I guess we just play more Wolves. One Beast. I think I like Beast more than Gideon. I think it's easier for them to attack Gideon. <laughs> Rotting Register is a bad idea? I mean... Riding Rider Sword is a lot better before Oko, but that's that's true with every creature with no ETB effect.
More creatures. Boo. So I can march for four at instant speed. All right, we got two more creatures out to make our march bigger. And I, I you know, like they could have countered Love Struck Beast, so that that's better than them playing Night Pack Ambusher. You know, like basically, I didn't want to pass here, and they they're able to play Night Pack Ambusher with me doing nothing. Unfortunately, they do have the best card in their deck. Unfortunately, it's gonna make my life harder. Tribunal's good at getting rid of this ambusher. Good, not an ambusher. Just one card in hand. Hey, Triton. Well, that's pretty awesome. We're gaining 21 life here, so I don't I don't have to like worry about a swing back too much. It's not going to be lethal, but it's a lot of damage. I should have I guess I should have just used the food with the goose, and then attacked with this 4-3 druid also. They're down to 11, they take 9. Oh no, they took that thing too, so they take 11 down to 9. Rhymeborn Cutthroat's still very good though. 
Same with the ambusher. Alright, down to 30. Nope, not down to 30. Down to 36. Look like they got this. I guess I could have just tribunaled last turn to try to take the ambusher and waited on flourish. I'm gonna need another march, I guess, or I don't know. I need some kind of removal for ambusher. Attacking with cutthroat. Interesting. Um, as far as I know, the Mythic Championship is just a tabletop tournament. Like, it's standard with paper cards. That was a good draw. So do they have a Brazen Borrower? I guess I could have just taken one of these wolves. And then... Eh, I mean, if I tr even if I try to take one of the wolves if they have a Brazen Borrower, it doesn't really work out for me anyway. Feels like they have Brazen Borrower. Yeah, the previous one was on Arena. Unless it's just pausing because of Castle Vantress. Earlier, you know, I talked about whenever somebody asked is my opponent roping, I said that no, they're probably just making a tough decision. That is probably just roping. There's not really decisions to make when you have the one one card in hand. It's fairly easy. Cast my card or don't cast my card. Alright, so they're down to two. You're welcome, Storks. Hey, Skyrim. Fun deck to build and get back into it. Any suggestions? Um, honestly, um, yeah. So you know, you've been out of MTG for a while. We have there's a there's a, a new BNR announcement that's going to be in ten days on Monday the eighteenth. And so I would honestly kind of wait before spending wild cards on anything. 
I kind of wait to see what happens there at that announcement because there's our our meta game's not too healthy. Um, we have a lot of Oko decks everywhere, as we see at the Mythic Championship today. Seventy percent of the decks are playing Oko, and eighty-seven percent of the decks are playing green. So eighty-seven percent are green. It's just like you know, it's just basically everything. Um, so we'll see if. Um, so basically, um, it may be good to kind of wait and just see what happens there. Why wouldn't they attack with this thing, with Brazen Borrower? All right, we picked up a win. We had some good top decks. Anyway, thank you so much there, Kilo. Thanks for the resub. Um, besides that, besides that answer, Skyrim's. If you want, if you want, you know, like a different answer. Um, yeah, I think it's possible that some, oh, some, yeah, some green cards get banned. Um, besides that, of course, you know, I have the YouTube, the YouTube channel there with all of the videos. You can go to the video tab, kind of browse through there. But then I have like some different playlists, and one of the playlists are my favorites. And so, like, whenever, whenever we get done playing a league, if I really liked it, I put it under the favorites part. So you can kind of, so you can go through there also and see if there's anything you really like from there. So I t turn one. Hmm. This is all just kind of awkward. Honestly, maybe I should have slid with Castle and then have turn two raise the alarm and turn three play Goose and Flower. Yeah, Triton. I like it. I like it. I mean, now my plans tra changed. I was going to be doing raise the alarm, but now with with having this card, I think that taking a turn and not spending green mana isn't something that I want. You know, obviously, like no matter what, I want to be able to play Nissa on turn four. So, like, I'm not going to be using the goose for mana first. I'm not sure what's going on with Nia over here. Huh. That's what's going on. Figured it out. Fight on without me. Okay. We got your backup, Nissa. Supposed to expect a sweeper. Okay. 
There we go. Thanks for the update, CW. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'm going to write it down. Maybe I'll play some historic on on uh, on Monday. Is is historic just best of one right now? Also, Hope they don't just have a Masker Girl in their deck for some reason. Good. Wait. Bad. They did have a Masker Girl in their deck for some reason. Yeah, I think Oko Madness is just locked for everybody right now. I think it's just locked right now. Do I have Disenchants in this sideboard? Nope. I have Conclave Tribunals in the main. Fires of Invention lets you do some really cool things. Welcome, Portugal. Hey, Sarah Angel. So I could have just made a 1-1 with the castle and been able to attack, but then, you know, it's just the double block here. But yeah, they're going to have the Merry Mint. The Cavalier of Dawn can kill the Nyssa and give me a 3-3. This game's, this game's over. Honestly. Yeah, we, we've, we've lost this game. Hey, Denriel, seven in a row. Thanks for that resub there. Thank you so much. Our deck's already pretty bad against sweepers. N Nissa is incredibly bad against sweepers. And just take them out. Try to make our deck a little bit better against sweepers with cards like Gideon, Questing Beast. Wicked Wolf could stay alive through a sweeper too. Can I just do I just like transform the deck? Just take out those other cards, play these things. Alright, let's keep two, two 
two visitations in. I'm going to trim a Lovestruck Beast with us bringing in the, the Gideons. And one of the two Amaras. Um, I'm not sure what Oko's Madness is. It's some new game mode that deals with elks. I don't know exactly what it does. Do you like black zombie decks? Um, I'd probably recommend green. So, Skyrims, I'd recommend like green black knights. Um, like Golgari knights is is definitely a deck, and a lot of a lot of commons and uncommons because a lot of the the knights are commons and uncommons, and don't have to worry too much about anything getting banned from that deck. I wouldn't think. So, you know, like Edgewall Innkeeper and like the the kind with um, the Curry Favor Knight um, and Lucky Clover and stuff like that. Um, yeah, to do donate bits, there's the... You're welcome. I walk a righteous path. I will lend you my strength. There's the... Right next to the emote um, button on the, the right of chat, there's the bit button, and that's how you purchase bits there. And that's how you also use them, by clicking on that. So Kenrith gives their creatures trample also. So it's not like I can just chump block with <clears throat> a couple raise the alarm tokens. They just play a fifth land. All right, well they definitely should have pumped it up. You fight dirty. Oh, all creatures gain trample and haste, so my creatures gain haste also. Well, that's cool. I never really realized that. I'm not sure why they didn't spend the 2 mana to put a counter on their Kendrith to kill my Gideon though. Not exactly sure there. Prepare for battle. I mean, I guess they they value gaining five life more. I don't know. They could have just killed my Gideon. My opponent's deck has looked really good. Yo, know, Naya Mythics. It's looked really good with, with the Fires of Invention there, for sure. I'm not sure how it'll look you know, at games that they don't have Fires of Invention. I don't, I don't know. But it definitely looked good there. Alright, so they do know it has that mode. Not again. It's a good anti-creature deck, though. You know, being able to play Clarions and a card that searches for Realm Cloak Giant. 
Good anti-creature deck. Unfortunately, I'm a creature deck. I like it, though. It could be a good... Kind of like this deck idea for, for best of one. Hey, Gustavo. Kenrith is just amazing. I haven't played any Kenrith yet. I still haven't crafted Kenrith's. This card's just so good. I'm always jealous whenever my opponents have it. Hey, yeah. Thanks, Skyrams. Ah. So, of course, if they have a sweeper, I'm going to die. They have a sweeper, I die. Thanks, Ollie. Koala Bear, monthly contribution to the Hawkeye Food Fund. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> he's very happy. Uh, you can kind of see him there. He's, he's back there on all the blankets. There he is. You can see him back there being a bum. Yeah, I mean that's that's my that's my plan is the triple march, but again if they just have a sweeper, I lose. But it's my only plan. It's my only chance. My deck kind of loses to sweepers anyway, though. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Get him. Get him. That's actually uh not quite lethal. Man, Kenrith's pretty insane. Yeah, one life short. Yay! <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good attack, though. It's a lot of creatures.
March into March into March. I'm gonna play some prison realms in here also. Hmm. Take out a Gideon on the draw. And a visitation. Thanks, Yud. Thumbnail's ready. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hundred goose sized soldiers or one soldier sized goose. Definitely want the the hundred goose sized soldiers. <laughs> it was a multitude of punches. No mulligan. Uh they kept their hand pretty quickly. Probably just have fires of invention again on turn four. Like always, uh, I'm keeping Paradise Druid. I'm keeping Conclave Tribunal to get rid of their fires. So we're on either Divine Visitation or Love Struck Beast putting back. Um, this looks like this is probably going to be a slow game with our hand and everything. I kind of want to play have this one Divine Visitation. I'm going to try keeping that. Obviously, this would have been a lot easier. I don't know about easier, but better if I had. If I could have just kept all those, it would have been nice to be able to keep the beast as well. Good. Into darkness. I believe in you. So we can give the Paradise Druids Vigilance so we can attack and keep it back to block. Yeah, the next band announcement is November 18th. So not this upcoming Monday, but the Monday after that. Share in my light. Hey, thank you so much there, Skyrims. Thanks for resubbing too. I appreciate that. Well, happy to have you here. I hope, even though you've been busy at work, I hope it's been good busy and life's going good and everything. Well, that hurts. I was kind of planning on having Gideon. I was going to be able to have Gideon minus six here to exile fires. But I was hoping... I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess that's not that big a deal because we have the prison realm. But yeah, I was, I was hoping they didn't have a haste threat. Alright, so they learned to be able to kill the Gideon. I tried my best. Okay, I've been trying to build Simic Adventures, run Ruck Lucky Clover in. Nice. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I like... Yeah, I like the Simic Adventures. I played... I played a Soltai Adventures in Best of One one time, and I, I liked it a lot, because, yeah, the, like, Lucky Clover with... Yeah, with, like, Brazen Borrower, Bounce Multiple Things, but obviously Lucky Clover with Fey of Wishes is pretty awesome. Ooh, you've been going with Hypnotic Sprite to counter things. Okay. I wasn't going with that. I like it. The Shared Summons card is awesome with Fires of Invention. Those two are pretty awesome together. Yeah, I thought that thing had Vigilance, yeah. So they're at 11. They're almost out of cards. I don't quite have lethal. I have 10 damage here. You have the Cavalier of Dawn blocks the 3-3. Three, three. So I don't think it's worth it to attack with the two creatures on the ground. I do two damage. And get rid of my 3-3. Three, three. I don't think that's worth it. I probably shouldn't play the Paradise Druid there. Because I guess they're going to need like a sweeper. Yeah, I guess I should not have played that Paradise Druid there. All right, so I'm going to make sure the Clarion doesn't kill me. Or Cl yeah. Uh, I did have wrong cloak giant. Mm, I guess that's just lethal cuz the outlaw's merriment. That was unfortunate. The last card was that sweeper. Darn. Ugh. Well, Fires of Invention is amazing. Standards of format. Eh, it's not really anything about standard. Magic is a game where the person that spends more mana is generally going to win. And... Um, if you look at the amount of mana my opponent spent compared to how much mana I spent, there is a gross difference in in uh, those, and that's that's what uh, that's what Fires of Invention allows you to do is to spend a whole lot of mana. The shared summons, um, obviously, that was like the the key card going and grabbing Cavalier of Dawn that destroyed my enchantment to get them back the Outlaws Merriment. 
and also get him the questing beasts that like that was just a that was a tough one um no i i didn't I, I liked keeping my 3-3 around. I didn't mind taking the 2 damage there. I liked keeping the 3-3 around. Um, instead of blocking with the Trampler. So yeah, I could have I could have basically destroyed my 3-3 for 2 life. I could have been at 4 and had no 3-3 or have the 3-3. Uh, um, anyway, this deck was... was not great obviously these march of the multitude decks these decks are really really tough against sweepers and so you know like playing against that deck that had a lot of sweepers with clarion and realm cloak giants and tutors for realm cloak giants with shared summons was pretty rough um but yeah the knife fires that that deck definitely looked really good you know they had fires on turn four every game and I wonder what that deck looks like when they don't have fires on turn four. Because uh, it didn't really seem like they had any mana acceleration or anything. They just hoped to just play fires on turn four and then multiple mythics for the next few turns and catch up from being behind. Anyway, um, I think that... Um, I think this deck, you know, as, as we talked about kind of earlier before, like if you were watching while we were playing, I think this deck is designed for like the, the current Oko decks, like your Sultai Oko, like your, which is your most popular deck in the format. It's not really playing um, sweepers or counter magic too much and trying to go over the top of them with divine visitation because there's not a lot of enchantment removal for divine visitation in those decks. Um, and then, and then, you know, start making some four fours just wasn't the case with what we played. We didn't, Again, we had, didn't play against any Oko. <laughs> so I need to stop playing anti-Oko decks because we've played against zero Oko uh, in the last couple of days. So I should just... I need to play decks that are really bad against Oko and good against um, Midnight Reaper and Knight of the Ebon Legion because that seems like all we're playing against. Um, but oh well, that's magic. Uh, yeah, so fun to play. I think the card cards I was... I was disappointed in Nyssa... I was impressed with March. Um, Amara looked pretty good. Lovestruck Beast was good. I would say Nissa was the card that I liked the least in the main deck. Sideboard, I don't, I don't really love. I don't really love the sideboard just in general. Like Gideon, Prison Realm, Questing Beast, even Wicked Wolf is kind of whatever. I don't really like our sideboard very much, but. It's kind of the problem with Selesnya. Like, there's not... The white cards are pretty weak. Sideboard-wise. And just main deck-wise and everything. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Those takeaways there for Selesnya tokens. All right. So, that's first deck for 5-0 Friday. We're going to move on. we got two other interesting ones here with Orzhov Control and Is It Flash. Um, but if you're watching it on YouTube, please hit that like button. Leave a comment. Do both of those. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching Selesnia Tokens, and I'll see you for the next video.